thought we'd do a follow-up on the solar panels situation and how they've panned out because we've had them for since September. Well, so. since September, so roughly six months ish. Yeah, nearly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and um, we've been able to see them how they performed throughout the winter and everything, and so we kind of wanted to give a review of what we've got. So we've got. Um, to go over it quickly, because if you haven't watched the um, solar install video, link in the thing thingamajiggy below. I always say that and I never put links in. <laughs> yeah, she should do. She will do, I'm hoping. So we have two 335 watt panels from LG, and they're sitting on a frame which we've, well, I built and sort of, we, we built, assembled and put into the boat. I designed um, modifications of an existing kind of uh, commercial product to allow us to tilt the panels as far as possible. And so we've had this kind of experience of going around with panels that are normally sitting perfectly flat, pointed straight up, and at other points we're tilting them and everything. We've sort of seen how they've performed. Mm -hmm. And I'd say for the winter they've performed absolutely beautifully. Yeah, you know? so there's a couple of things we've learned, I guess. Um, we've got more than enough wattage, panelage, yeah, to cover our needs, we've got more than enough. Um, but our 335 times 2 wired in series is basically 670 watts of potential power. Um, the reality is, is that that is never what actually gets pumped out. But we're often, even with the panels flat, um, on full sun days, like what is apparently building up behind us right now, yeah. <laughs> um, we're getting uh, upwards of about 10 watts or 10 amps into the batteries pretty much consistently. Because we've been sitting here in this location for a week, eight days. Eight days we've been sitting here and we haven't run the engine once. We haven't needed to run the engine once and we haven't dropped below about 78% power. We haven't tilted the panels because, because of where the sun is. That way. It means we have to tilt the panels like this. Which means we have to stand over the water on that side. And it's much easier to tilt them from the side that the towpath is on because there's no risk of then falling into the canal. And when it's this cold... You really don't want to risk falling into the canal. Because... The it's been freezing. Yeah. Because the other problem is the when it is freezing, all the metal parts on the, um, on the brackets are, are so cold and very quickly when you're turning all the... The, the nuts. You get painfully cold fingers and, and you really can't do it safely. So we basically haven't risked it and we haven't needed to risk it because I mean it's been overcast a lot, it's been it's been on sunny, it's been raining, we've had a mixture but we've been getting enough. Yeah and um, luckily we're in a position where there's no sort of tree overhanging us or anything right now mm -hmm. so even with the sun quite low on the horizon and glancing off the panels we are getting between about 8 and 10 amps um, continuously and during the really sunny portions of the day and downwards to three to four amps during the sort of rest of the day and it just sort of keeps it up yeah which is really good At our last mooring um we were able to fully tilt because we were on the right side and that was just amazing the amount of amps we were getting yeah on the sunny day yeah we were we were tilted, we were sitting flat, it was a sunny day, no clouds in the sky. Winter sun, so definitely very, very low on the horizon. And that's kind of the point at which it's going to be the most of a problem, right? Because when your panels are flat like this table, and the, and the sun is that low on the horizon, most of the photons are going to bounce off the glass and keep going the other way. It has to actually hit the glass and then go in sufficiently to hit the, the cell to generate any power. And we were still getting like a decent amount of amps. Right now we've got full sun outside at non-tilted glancing panels, so the light's coming down and glancing across the solar panels, and we're getting just about 10 amps, uh, 195 watts, 194 watts at 72 volts. And then we went outside, tilted everything, got it up to the optimum angle for this time of year, um, pointed at the at, at the southbound sun so we were we were lucky to be facing exactly the right direction and we jumped to basically 20 amps of voltage going straight in right so same situation but now we have tilted the panels they're no longer glancing at the sun and you're seeing we've gone up 10 amps roughly um, there is a cloud coming across right now so it's dropping but when there's no cloud we're getting up to 20 amps and 350 watts uh, at 
for some reason 36 volts so we're dropping in voltage but jumping significantly in wattage I'm still trying to figure out the math here and it says we're putting roughly 25 amps from the solar panels into the batteries um, this is after our inverters kicking off and everything so we're not getting full efficiency in because of course we're losing something out to running our electricity so it just means we don't have to think about our electricity like we yeah. and we've actually got a bit complacent we have you know the inverter running with the laptops charging all day when we're both working um and there was one, there was one day when we just got complacent and didn't think about it and it had been overcast and i think we'd been there like for four days and it was overcast and then it got to late at night and we, the batteries had, had gone sufficiently low that um the, it the, got angry at us yeah the alarm started going off yeah because we were just we had taken it for granted um but that was a one-off wasn't it i think it was four days in a row of heavy overcast and rain and rain yeah. and so nothing coming in and i was still working so we were using the inverter quite a bit we'd gone four full days of very very dark and this is the combination of our lithiums you know doing their job but also the solar panels were were actually offsetting even in that full cloud mm -hmm. pointed at the sun that was behind those clouds mm -hmm. with the tilt we were sufficient you know if we'd been leaving it flat at that point we'd have been getting nothing in because we were tilting over like that we were getting in a couple of amps and that couple of amps basically offset the Usage. the inverter for the majority of four days mm -hmm. so by having them tilted even in heavy cloud we were still offsetting most of our power usage and if we'd been a little less complacent about you know sort of Just, turning the inverter off more often yeah. then basically solar is an amazingly worthwhile investment um it's more or less free power it's just a really nice feeling to know that we're not running the engine and the sun is just providing everything we need yeah it, just, it feels really it's like being a plant it would be nice to be able to be in the position where we could tilt towards the sun more often what we really need is a hydraulic system so we're sitting inside the boat just push a button well actually we don't even push a button there's like a sensor oh yeah yeah like an the, automatic sun sensor on the panels and it tilts up and down and round and just follows the sun yeah so if you could just work that out yeah like some sort of sun tracking gimbal mount um i'm glad we put the energy and effort into getting to tilt and getting to tilt as far as we have because for this winter for living on board 24 hours a day seven days a week um in deepest winter in middle england on a canal like you really need to be able to tilt if we weren't tilting we'd be still running the diesel every two well, days to sit still for two weeks yeah yeah, yeah. To, or even to, a week. to really sit still and not have to run the diesel so if you can tilt that far with panels that are decently large it basically doubles the amount of amperage that you're getting from the from that glancing winter sun which is like just an amazing efficiency gain out of just tilting it to a high degree and so i i think it's like we we definitely benefited from making the time and sort of engineering investment to get it to tilt i do wish that we'd maybe sacrificed a little of the wattage because at the end of the day once we've got them tilted we've got more wattage than we need by quite a large amount we, yeah they're bringing in more than we can we can store yeah so our panels are basically the same width as the top of our boat and and to get them to tilt we had to because they're so large we had to figure out a mechanism that allows us to pull the panels to one side and then angle it and i think that mechanism is really worthwhile and, and it's worked and it has saved us you know sort of the trouble of this thing but if i'd gone with cheaper panels that were a, a narrower width still use that same mechanism to tilt but then been able to use the mechanism from sunworks that just basically just, showed up yeah. then less engineering problems less less fitment problems um you'd still get the benefit of the tilt so what you're saying and you'd have a lot more possibility at least of being able to actually get up on the roof and do the tilt instead of being hanging off the gunnels so you know getting up on the roof is still somewhat dangerous but it's a lot less dangerous than just having the tips of your toes on the gunnel and freezing hands so what you're saying is slightly smaller panels with slightly less wattage would potentially have given us exactly what we needed yeah yeah well i think we overdid it we we overcompensated in a sense by by 
getting too much wattage in those two panels. But then the other thing is, we have turned our fridge off recently. Yeah, if we were running the fridge full time, if we were running the fridge full time, the reality is we'd, we'd Probably. definitely still yeah. need the, the then, um, large panels. We we have realized that you really don't need to run the fridge at all. In winter. Yeah, like it took us a little while to catch on to the fact that we didn't need it. And now we've just, we should have a box. We've just got a bag on the front of the bow. Now we had over spec based on the idea that we'd, we'd be running, running the, the fridge, fridge all the yeah. time. I think once we re-engage the fridge and we use it more often, we'll still find we're a bit over spec So what do you think the ideal setup would be for solar? Well, I for think... For our use, which is two laptops charging, working most days mm -hmm. um and a smallish inverter we're not running a big three kilowatt inverter or anything no uh, charging um, phones and cameras yeah and and with and everything in the summer what else do we have uh just the led lights, LED lights. and the the and then you know incidental things like the alarms and stuff that, yeah. that run off of it and, and the, the, the little fan that runs on the toilet continuously overall i think that if we had gone with say 250 watt panels Two, 250. Two, two 250 watt panels would have given us a much smaller width. It would have been a, a standard size panel width. It would have been an easier installation. Much easier installation. Still be able to do the full tilt. Again, depending on usage, if you use more, you'd need more. Because that's the thing. Some people have TVs and oh other yeah. kitchen gadgets and washing machines, and we just don't have any of that. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we are going to add a washing machine at some point, we think. But <laughs> when we do that, we'll be doing it off the three kilowatt while moving. We haven't got, you know, electric kettles or toasters, hair dryers, any of that to worry about. So we're fairly low usage already. Calculations are going to be individual, but I think for us, yeah, probably two 230 to 250 watt panels of a narrower size so that we'd be more inclined to be able to tilt more often. It'd be lovely to be able to get, you know, some sort of lazy susan type thing up there so they could also rotate and everything but at the end of the day the only ones of those that i've seen that sort of allow rotation are more likely to sort of pinch and chop cables yeah. and, and the more moving parts the more yeah. things can go wrong but overall <laughs> like in conclusion we are more than happy with the setup we've got it's working really really well yeah totally recommend solar totally completely think it is absolutely the way to go. It is worth investing in better batteries, um, you know, that can take that that capacity, whether it's like us with, with, you know, the lithiums, which can just take the charge really well, or more lead acids so that you're, you're basically just trickle charging more often and everything. I would think it's even worthwhile for people that are sitting still in marinas and everything. Like it just cuts down your, your overall costs because you're not paying for the power that's coming in through the, and it's through more. a meter. You know, environmentally way more environmentally friendly i think basically we didn't want to come up short so we we can't we over we, over we overestimated yeah because we thought it'd be better to have and it. i mean I, I knew that at the time because bimble solar has this calculator that allows you to do it and it's like you know you should you should over spec by like 20 to something percent and i think i did like 80. <laughs> i was like i really want to over spec because i want to make sure we're but this, but we're good us, to go it gives us the scope to add things in the future like you yeah. know, if you want to get some monitors or you yeah. want to add anything in. Well, and that's the nice thing also is is that we, we will. We will add some more power things. But I had, when we did the installation, I had this idea in mind of like at least leaving myself room to add extra panels. Yeah. And now I'm like, yeah, we're not going to have to do that. <laughs> Mind you, I had an image of the English winter, winter that wasn't... Sunny either. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I yeah, I thought it would be absolutely miserable 24 seven for the majority of the time from October through, you know, June. But <laughs> it turns out it's actually not bad. Hope that was useful. Um, Hope that uh, George, you didn't snore too much. Most the people like the snoring. Probably yeah, wasn't enough. Snoring. Yeah, there wasn't enough snoring, but he's, he's, he's still engaged a little bit. So yeah, I hope that was useful. And if you've got any questions about our setup, um, just let us know. What we're Welcome to Watch George Snore TV. Yeah. Basically, what happens is Michael and I will talk about something dull and boring, which will send George to sleep 
meaning he will snore for the next 15 minutes or more and you can enjoy listening to him snore while we talk about something boring we call it snore revision well we don't really but anyway we should we should call it snore revision and we're not creating noise pollution we're not doing anything really and oh there he goes <laughs> yeah there he is he's snoring away he's bored the fridge while it was running would be offset and the majority of the day it's not running mm-hmm. um it's going to run more often in the summer than it is going to like it's going to actually have to run its compressor more often in the summer than it is and they're sitting on a frame which we've well i built and sort of we, we built assembled and put into the boat i designed 